Hello and welcome to the animal health and husbandry section of this series. Go ahead and get that PowerPoint up for you. Okay, so animal health and husbandry. Again, my name is Emily Nolan, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So what is animal health and husbandry? Animal health is the maintenance of providing food, water, safety, and preventing disease in the animal. Husbandry is the ethical care of the animal. So husbandry is the, the term that we use when we are taking care of, you know, providing these safe environments, food, water, and preventing the disease. Um, husbandry is the term that we use as, in the veterinary world um, when we talk about all these things that we provide for these animals. So most important things, providing ethical care for the animal is gonna be fresh food and water, clean housing, all their medical needs are met, whether that's vaccinations, any type of surgery, spaying or neutering, any types of treatments, anything like that. Grooming, we wanna make sure that these animals are healthy, clean, they don't have matted fur, they don't have any type of you know, um, injuries up underneath their fur that we don't know about because they're not, you know, they don't have a haircut. Just making sure that they're, they're very well kept, they're bathed on a regular basis. Um, different animals are gonna have different times of when they are gonna be bathed. So based on their coat, based on their environment, things like that, um, and making sure that their environment and the environment that they live in is clean and safe, making sure that there's no problems there. So why is good husbandry important? Good husbandry means a healthy environment in, a daily life, in the daily life for these animals. Um, healthy and happy animals grow big and strong without disease. Animals without these medical problems will produce good quality animal products. So whether you're working with companion animals or livestock or exotics or any of those other animals we had talked about before, we wanna make sure that they are getting happy, healthy lives, making sure that they're being the best animals that they can be in regards to what the environment, food, and other um, aspects that we provide for them. Um, but if you are working with livestock animals, they are gonna produce better quality uh, animal products, milk, eggs, meat. Um, those are things that the products that they're going to produce. And as producers of those meat, of those um, things, you know, you wanna make sure that you're sending the best quality to the store um, and only healthy animals are going to give that to you. Also, Another product that we don't think about is if you do take a livestock animal or a companion animal to the show, um, that can actually win you money, awards, things like that. That is an animal product, the product being an award or the money that you get from, from winning those competitions. So good husbandry equals healthy animals. So making sure that we take good care of them keeps them healthy. So some key concepts we're going to go over today. Um, these are terms that are used and, and thrown around in the veterinary world. So these are things that we want to keep thinking of and make sure we understand them um, properly. So animal welfare, um, a measurement of animal's physical state, also known as the animal's well-being. Um, animal welfare is very much different than animal rights. We're not going to talk about animal rights today. Animal welfare is being an advocate to make sure that they are healthy and happy and have a good environment. Um, and that they're having all these things met, that their well-being is, is good. Animal ethics, um, following an ethical code while caring for your animal. This includes minimizing pain and distress and ensuring good animal welfare. Um, so then another term, key term that we talk about, um, especially in 4-H, if you are in a 4-H in a environment or a 4-H learning environment, um, this is a term that we're gonna talk about a lot. Uh, it's called the five freedoms. Um, so this is the basis of, eth of ethical animal ownership. Providing these five freedoms um, to your animal is essential to ensuring good animal welfare. So the first one is freedom from hunger and thirst, making sure that they are fed, making sure they have clean water, things like that. Um, freedom from discomfort, making sure that they're not in pain, making sure that they live in a comfortable environment that their you know, habitat or enclosure or field or house or wherever they live is big enough for them and provides all those things for them. Um, freedom from pain, injury, and disease. You wanna make sure that that environment that they're in is safe. 
There's not sharp objects in the fencing. There's not, you know, anything that they can get into, things that they are going to, are possibly going to eat that could make them sick. You know, you wanna make sure it's clean. So that way you're not having disease. Um, you want to make sure that there's no feces or urine or anything like that in their area um, to prevent disease. And then the next one's going to be freedom to express their natural behavior. So certain animals' natural behavior is to roam or to graze or to play and to run or, or hide or different things like that. So it's important to provide those things within the environment or for the animal so that way they can go about their normal natural behaviors. And we had talked about what's normal and what's not, what's not normal in our animal behavior talk. And it's important to make sure that the, the natural behaviors that they are going to normally express based on the species or breed of that animal, they're freely able to do that in their environment that we as humans provide for them. Freedom from fear and distress. So they don't wanna be wondering where their next meal is gonna come from. They don't wanna be wondering if the person that's handling them or caring for them is going to be abusive or is going to cause them pain or scare them. Um, they wanna make sure that they're comfortable in their environment. We don't change their environment unnecessarily. Sometimes you do have necessary changes you need to make, but you don't wanna give them anything that's unnecessary change that could you know, stress them out or anything like that, cause distress. Natural behaviors. Um, so we've kind of talked about that before in animal behavior, but we're going to go over kind of an, another aspect of it. So these are behaviors that animals need to do to survive or choose to do for comfort or pleasure. Exploring, feeding, nesting, these are going to be, you know, super important um, and more noticeable in livestock or exotic animals such as elephants, giraffes, um, Pigs are going to have, you know, nesting behaviors. And we're going to go through a few different animals and what their natural behaviors are and things that they need to have in their environment um, that it's going to be, be cohesive and good for their natural behaviors. So let's talk about dogs. So most people have dogs. And if you think about it, you know, that is a super common household pet and animal that we're pretty familiar with. Most people are familiar with it. So we're gonna go through a few things for each one of these animals we're gonna talk about. Um, and I'm gonna go kind of fast because some of them are the same and then some of them are different. So, and you're kind of, you'll be able to point out what we need to constantly keep the same no matter what animal species it is and what things we need to vary based on the species that we're working with. So no matter what, good nutrition and fresh water, However, each dog needs a meal plan made just for them. So each dog breed, they may need different things. Their life phase, so puppy food comparatively to adult food, things like that that you need to take into consideration. Any type of supplements or anything like that that would help with joint health as they get older, that's part of their nutritional diet. Um, if they have any type of um, endocrine disease or anything like that, there are special diets made for that. And that's something to talk to the veter your veterinarian when you're considering those for your dog. Um, you want to have a clean and appropriate environment. That's also going to be super important um, based on most of the animals we talk about. It's always going to need to be in clean, but what's appropriate for each animal. So for dogs, the right amount of inside or outside time, clean bedding, making sure you have a clean dog. <laughs> right size of dog crate or other, any other living space. So if you keep a you crate train or you keep your dog in a backyard or in a room or when you're gone and you're not with them or if they're in the house, making sure that you know they have enough room to roam and, and, and stretch out and things like that. So for dog crates, the rule of thumb is if they can stand up and turn around, that means that the dog crate is big enough for them. Um, training, so basic home training, you know, sit, stay, different things that's going to be necessary for your house, not to jump up on people, you know, different things. And you're going to know that what is good for your house or your type of dog that you need to address. Making sure that they're housebroken, that definitely helps you clean, keep a clean environment. You know, if they're not urinating or having goblins that's all over the house, that keeps, that's less work for you. Um, and then that way they can go in the yard or things like that. Um, exercise, each breed is gonna to need to run more than others, like depending on what breed you have. So Huskies are working dogs, and we had talked about that in animal behavior. You know, German Shepherds are not equal to Yorkshire Terriers. So when you think about that, German Shepherds may need to run more hours a day. They may need to go have somebody run with them, um, go to the dog park more, 
have scheduled fetching events or things like that, that you set aside time for them for those specific things where Yorkies may not need as much time or may need, or may need different type of activities to stimulate them. Um, some need to play more than others, you know, more just for fun to get kind of those wiggles out. Um, labs really don't mature mentally until they're about three or four. And so they're gonna have three or four years of wanting to play all the time. Um, making sure you have good mental stimulation, a good amount of tension and play time based on your dog and dog breed, toys and chew activities based on what your dog does or doesn't like. And then of course, veterinary care, you wanna make sure that they're getting all the vaccinations that they need to prevent disease, um, making sure that they're spayed or neutered to also, so it does prevent disease, but it also keeps um, reproduction to a minimum or control. So that way we don't have puppies that don't have a home. Um, that is not good care for them. Um, treatment for any illness, it's gonna happen no matter what animal it is, they're gonna get an illness at some point in their lifetime, but making sure that we take them to the doctor and we get them the medicine or the necessary, whatever that the veterinary recommends is super important to their health. So cats, again, nutrition and fresh water. However, things to think about when it comes to cats. Cats cannot eat dog food because dog food does not have key proteins called taurine that cats need. So cat food is made specifically for cats and it has more protein and a specific type of protein that dog food doesn't have. If cats don't eat that, they are gonna be malnourished. So it's important that we're feeding them the right kind of food. Without proper nutrition, cats can develop health problems. Um, cats don't drink as much water as dogs and can often be dehydrated. So it's important to have, they have different types of watering systems for cats, water that moves, things like that, um, that entices them to drink. And that's important to make sure that they're not dehydrated. Of course, clean environment, clean bedding, clean litter box. So now, you know, where you're teaching a dog to go outside to use the restroom, cats have a litter box if they're mainly indoors. So you wanna make sure that that stays clean. And of course, a clean cat, they're not too keen on taking a bath. However, you know, making sure that their paws are clean, maybe taking a wet wipe or a paper towel or things like that, making sure there's no food on their face, making sure after they use the restroom, there is no residual bowel movements or urination on their rear end area. Mental stimulation, toys that your cat can play with that are safe. Um, time to play with your cat on his or her terms. So cats, they're kind of funny. They, you know, they're gonna pick and choose when they want to play. And it's important for you to be okay with that and for you to be available for them. So everything is, is on his or her terms. So that brings me to understanding cat behavior. Cats do get really stressed if you don't do things on their terms. So it's important to pay attention on your cat's behavior. Um, so like I said, everything is done on cat's terms. If a cat becomes stressed, it can cause serious medical problems. There are some urinary problems that is now being studied that can be brought on by stress. And it's very important that we don't put our cats in stressful situations. We don't stress them out and we limit it as much as possible. So that way we can keep them from getting any type of illness. And of course, veterinary care, vaccines, spay and neuter, treatment for illness, just like dogs. So we're gonna start, move on to livestock. So swine or pigs. So again, food and water, availability and quality, making sure that those are right. The right choice of feed. There's different types of feeds and based on what pigs you have, if you have pot belly based on a, a, a Yorkshire, you know, something that's gonna be a big old meat pig, you wanna make sure that you're giving them the right food and the right nutrition. Um, depending on how long you're raising them, are they a pet, are they for show? Um, are they going to, you know, slaughter, things like that. Um, housing, making sure that their pen is clean. Um, making sure they have clean and dry bedding. As you see, this nice little piggy over there has some nice dry straw to lay in. And he seems very happy. And he's a very clean pig. Um, there's no bugs or rats in the pen um, or feed making sure that none of their feet is contaminated or their area is contaminated, possibly where it could transmit disease. Um, that there's a mud area or a wet area for pins to cool off. So pigs don't have sweat glands like me or you. They are, they only sweat, or well, they don't sweat. So the only way to cool off is to roll around in mud pit. So um, enrichment for them, 
a pool for wallowing. That is a natural behavior that they do. So we want to provide that in their environment. Space for rooting, again, natural behavior needs to be provided in their environment. They're also very social. So they need other opportunities to socialize with other animals. They also enjoy socializing with people as long as you start that from a young age. And we talked about that a little bit in animal behavior. This is a natural behavior. They need to have that in their environment. Veterinary care, routine vaccinations, routine deworming. These animals are mainly outdoors. It's very rare that there's a pig that lives indoors, not to say that doesn't happen, but it's more rare. Um, so they do get intestinal parasites and it's extremely important to make sure that you are deworming them and to keep them healthy. Any treatment for any illnesses, um, spay and neutering. So you're not normally going to spay pigs. Um, it's pretty complicated and the anesthesia that goes in with spaying pigs is, is complicated. However, it has been done. I have assisted with one. It was a lot of fun. She was a great patient. Um, but we do neuter pigs fairly frequently and also infrequently. They, depending on what you're raising your pig for. If you're raising your pig for show or as a pet, definitely, and you're not planning on breeding the, the pig, definitely neutering, things like that are super important. However, if this pig is going to slaughter, it may not need to be neutered because it may not reach um, that development or it may be slaughtered before it gets to breed with another animal. So that, that's something to keep in mind and research and figure out what you're doing with your pigs and then talk to your veterinarian and see what they recommend for spaying and neutering. Handling constant time with people in order to have appropriate human interaction behaviors, good behavior with veterinary staff and for necessary treatments. Um, if you are not constantly handling them and then we have, they get an illness and now we have to handle them and treat them and they're aggressive, they may not get the appropriate treatment that they need because it may be complicated. Or if we send you home with treatment, say you need to give them medication or give them a shot or anything like that, now you can't and they can't give the medical care because they are aggressive or have other behavioral problems. It's super important to make sure every one of your animals that you're handling is handled appropriately and used to be, being handled so that way we can give them medical treatment. They also want to have good behavior for showing or the market. So if you're going to take them to market, they are going to be go through an auction process. They're going to be showed to the seller or the buyer from you as the seller to make sure that they are healthy and they look well. But again, you can't show them or sell them or get any money if they're if the buyer sees them and says, oh, I can't work with them or I can't even get them on my trailer or I can't do anything with them. So then you're not going to be able to sell them. So that's important to think about. Now, once we get into livestock, we have another category that pops up a lot, record keeping. So yes, it's important to keep your vaccination records. Absolutely. It's extremely important to keep your va va vaccination records for your cat or your dog. Absolutely. However, it's a lot more common for the veterinary clinic to have copies of those that you can request if you're a little bit, if you, if you lose some or something like that. However, when it does come to veterinary care for swine or other livestock animals, your records are going to be the main records and you're going to need to take those anytime you go to market, anytime you go to shows, anytime like that to make sure that those are healthy animals. If you're transporting them across state lines and you get inspected, you need to be able to show your paperwork for them. Keeping track of the animals that are bought and sold is a good thing to have from your records, where they came from, where they're going. Um, any veterinary care, if they've had vaccines, if they've been treated for anything, if they've had any, any antibiotics, because now you're talking about meat products, and that is something to consider. Any type of breeding information, have they been bred? Are they pregnant? Are they intact? Meaning, do they still, have they been neutered or spayed? Um, when was the last, if it's a female, when was the last time that they had a litter? Was there any complications? Did you have to give any medications? Things like that. Super important um, to keep those on hand for our, our livestock animals. Cattle, cows. So like I said, few topics that are gonna be the same. Clean food and water, both dry feed, grain, cracked corn, hay, and grass are super important. Um, so there's a variety of feeds that you're gonna wanna be feeding your cows because they are ruminants. Ruminants are constantly eating and digestion takes a lot longer. So it's important to feed the appropriate food. And you're going to want to feed more dry feed for dairy cattle. Dairy cattle are going to process it faster than beef cattle. 
beef cattle are going to be mainly grass or other um, or other types of grain that you're going to feed them that's going to be digested differently. So those are things you want to look into when you're picking what type of cows that you're going to be raising and how to feed them. Housing, you want to make sure they have dry, clean bedding in the barn, a barn for shelter. There's no bugs or rats in their feed or in their hay or bedding as much as possible. The area is clean of excrement and urine. If they're not standing in it. You can get uh, uh, hoof rot, things like that. If they have a cut, they can get bacteria in it and get huge abscesses if they're not kept clean. You wanna have um, good environmental conditions. So you need to change the area um, which, in which they're held as the changes in weather. So if it's snowing, they need to be in the barn. If it's raining, they probably need to be in the barn as long as it has good drainage. If it's nice and sunny, they need to be out of the barn. They need to be grazing, doing things like that. They need to have good enrichment. Um, so the space to explore, lay down, chew cud, things like that. Other animals to interact with, they are social and they're a herd animal. So if they have other cows in their environment, that's gonna go right along with their natural behavior. Again, veterinary care, vaccinations, supplements if needed a lot of times, depending if they're dairy or beef, you're gonna to wanna to give them supplements for them to grow healthy, for them to produce healthy. There's certain sicknesses um, such as milk fever, where if they're lactating too much and then they're depleting themselves of nutrients and not enough calcium, they can become sick. So that's important. Treatment for any illnesses, abscesses, things like that. Handling, again, same as like the pigs, they need to be comfortable around people. They, they need to be easily to load into a cattle chute or a trailer. So if you look at this bottom picture here, um, this, is man, this nice man is working with a cow in a cattle chute. We kind of talked about this before in uh, animal behavior as a safe way to work with cows. It's important that they're used to going in there, that they know that they're not gonna get hurt, harmed or hurt or anything like that. He is applying a tag here. A lot of people, um, when they work with the cattle chute, they feed their, they'll run them through the cattle chute without doing anything to them other than feeding them. So that way they realize I'm not gonna get hurt, things like that. That way, when we do have to give them medical care, tag them, check them for pregnancies, anything like that, get inspected when they are going to be bought and sold, that they're used to that process. And again, records, um, uh, of animals bought and sold, free production records, vaccination, or any other type of veterinary records. Um, they also need to be comfortable in new environments such as a show or a market, um, things to keep in, in your mind. Now we're talking about horses. So while yes, they are a large animal, this is a whole nother ball game. So there's a few things that are gonna be the same. Again, clean food and water, dry food that isn't moldy or there's no bugs or rats in the feed. Um, a lot of times, some of the feeds that you feed horses can get moldy. If you feed them that, they can get really sick. Green grass for them to graze. They need to have supplements and hay as needed, depending on the weather. Um, if it's cold, they're probably going to need more hay because they're not going to need as much grass. So you're going to want to supplement that in and out. The housing, they need a stable and a pasture that's safe. Horses are notoriously for hurting themselves because they just being silly. <laughs> They just weren't paying attention and then they hurt themselves. So it's important to make sure there's no possible way they can, you know, rub, rub across the fence and poke themselves, stab themselves with some metal or some wood or anything like that. Barn to shelter for winter. Um, their environment. Um, in the winter, most horses will need to wear a blanket to keep warm. So if you look at this top, I think it's your top right or top left picture, this lovely horse is in the snow and he is wearing a blanket. So that's important to make sure that these horses have blankets on so they don't get too cold while they're in a colder environment. Even here in Florida, we will put blankets on during the winter for most of our horses. You wanna have dry uh, fields with green grass. If they're out in the wet, if it's constantly just wet, they can get hoof rot they can develop infections, they can founder, things like that. So things to keep in mind environmental wise to keep your horse healthy. Um, veterinary care again, vaccinations. Here's a huge one. They need to be up to date on their Coggins test. So a Coggins test is a blood test that is uh, a blood sample that's taken from them and is sent to a, a specified uh, reference laboratory with a whole bunch of information. So if you look, to this nice document to the side, that's a Coggins 
laboratory test um, form that you have to fill out. They have to draw the markings to make sure it has the correct horse. It's all this information about where you live, where you're from. Coggins tests for equine infectious anemia. There is no vaccine for it. It is spread uh, from, from unhealthy horse to healthy horse um, through different types of vectors, through breeding, uh, bugs, um, medical equipment, anything like that. It is a bloodborne pathogen. And so these horses need to test negative once a year, every year for equine infectious anemia in order to go to shows, to cross state lines, um, if you buy a new horse, it's important to have that, things like that. So Coggins tests are extremely important. You wanna make sure um, they have treatments for illnesses, that their teeth are being floated, that their, that their hooves are being uh, trimmed and shaped. Um, so that's not gonna be a veterinarian that trims hooves, they, although they have before, that's gonna be a farrier. You need to make sure that they have um, teeth floating. They are hypsodontic, so their teeth continue growing. And because they chew mostly with their back teeth, chewing grass or any, you know, some other type of foliage, um, those back teeth can develop sharp spots on their teeth and that can cut up in their mouth and then they're not eating and now they're malnourished. So we wanna make sure their teeth are getting floated when the veterinarian finds it appropriate. Um, handling and horsemanship, safe riding practices and equipment. You're going to want to keep your horse um, or clean from dirt and other material. They like to roam. They like to rub on the ground. They like to get poop on them. So you want to make sure that they're nice and clean in case they do cut themselves open. They're not introducing bacteria into that wound. Um, keep horse mane and tail detangled and brushed. Um, that's super important. Sometimes they can mat up on, on each other. They can cause hematomas. They can cause problems. So you want to make sure that they're being brushed and kept clean. Enrichment, so horses do like to play. So it's important to have safe toys. As you can see in this bottom picture, this um, horse is holding this bouncy ball. He probably loves that. I've seen many of horses play with stuff like that. You wanna make sure that they're safe for them to play with and that those are available. Um, other horses in the pasture to socialize with. Horses are again, social animals. It's good to have other, other horses that are compatible with them to make sure that they're, they're doing well. Um, record keeping. Coggins testing, like I said before, extremely important. Keeping those documents on you or with the horse if you're not on your property at all times. Um, bought and sold paperwork, any type of breeding paperwork, and of course, vaccination paperwork. So now we're going to talk about chickens. Again, a whole nother, you know, once you talk about poultry or livestock, birds, a whole nother thing when it comes to livestock. Um, a few things are the same though. Again, clean food and water. Sometimes chickens can get really messy with their feeders. If you look at this feeder's hanging to keep them from pooping in the feeder or anything like that. So that's something to keep in mind, making sure that those are nice and clean. Um, clean environment and bedding, um, covered shelter for safety from, from predators and to lay eggs. So you wanna have somewhere for them to roost and lay eggs. You also wanna have a covered shelter because Hawks like to eat chickens. Other animals like to eat chickens. They are definitely the, the prey of many animals. So it's important to keep them protected. Veterinary care. We don't tend to vaccinate birds as much. We also don't spay or neuter birds. Um, so that's not something you have to worry about. You wanna make sure that they get any treatments or any supplements that they need um, for illnesses. Um, sometimes they, have, they are malnourished a little bit. So they need something called uh, oyster shell to help with their egg laying or any type of other general health. Sometimes they need antibiotics. You know, they get an upper respiratory infection, anything like that they're going to need. Enrichment. Ducks um, are a livestock bird. They need clean water to swim in. They are waterfowl. They need to swim. It is part of their natural behavior, so they need to have it in their pen. Um, outside of pen time to roam and explore, if you have free-range chickens, they like to pick bugs and egg and things like that. So having them out in roam for a little bit, not all day, not forever, but in a controlled environment that you can see them and you can watch them, make sure that they're protected is good for them. Snacks, if you look on this bottom picture, they have a watermelon. Lots of people like to put watermelons or corn or you know different things out there for them to kind of play with. Um, handling, they need to be comfortable with people. They also need to be comfortable with different environments for shows, taking them to the vet, anything like that. 
records, where they've been bought and sold for poultry or any type of birds, it is extremely important to make sure you know where they came from and where they're going. Because any diseases that are avian are most likely to be zoonotic and transmittable to people. And we'll talk about that in the next section of zoonotic diseases. So the government would like you to have as many records on birds. So in case someone was to get sick, they know where they got sick and they can address the issue. Breed and age, any medical records, any type of treatments, things like that, and egg laying records. It's important to, if you're gonna sell a hen or anything like that, it's important to let, let that person know they've had any complications with eggs, any abnormalities with egg laying, um, if they're kind of getting towards the end of their life and then it's gonna stop egg laying, if they're premature and haven't started egg laying, that's important. What kind of eggs that they lay, some lay brown eggs, some lay blue eggs, some lay white, or not, well, not white, but speckled eggs, whites after they've been bleached. I guess they're kind of white. So those are, those are things to keep in mind. So now we're gonna talk about exotic animals. This is gonna be broad because there's so many exotic animals. So it's important to research that animal that you are taking care of because each exotic animal, each exotic animal's needs are going to be different. Large animal exotics versus small animal exotics. This, the important thing for that is the space that that animal needs and its habitat's gonna be different. What an elephant needs and what this bearded dragon needs are gonna be completely different. One you can hold in your hands, one is three, four, 10 times the size of you. But some things are always gonna be the same. Clean water and food, always important, no matter what the animal. A clean habitat is also important for all animals. You wanna change uh, the habitat depending on the weather or if the animal will have a tolerance to that weather. If it's a reptile, they're not gonna be doing well with cold. So you wanna make sure they have a heating pad, a heating lamp, or they have a good space where they can lay out and get the sun and become warm again. Does that animal need to be socialized with other animals? Some are meant to live alone. Some are meant to live in herds. And it's important to think about that um, as you're working with that animal and making sure that their environment is appropriate. Are these exotics able to be handled or should they have minimal human contact? So this bearded dragon is actually very social with people, really likes to be with people. Um, elephants tend to like to be with people, but for, for safety reasons, it's important to maybe not work with them. And as a super hands-on experience, this owl doesn't need to be handled by people, but it's getting medical attention. So it needs to be handled by a person. Um, if some of these animals cannot be handled by humans due to the danger of their interaction, such as uh, elephants, if an elephant gets spooked or it gets mad, that is an easy situation that you've put yourself in as a veterinary professional to be ran over. I mean, we think about stampede and that's what you think about. So that's something to keep in mind. Is there a herd of them? Is there just one? Things that we need to keep in mind when we're staying safe around these animals. So. In conclusion, there's always going to be these things, no matter what animal you're working with, livestock, companion animal, exotic animal, anything that you're working with, they're gonna need these three things, these things. Clean food and water, clean environment, veterinary care, handling, good record keeping, and the appropriate arrangement. Normally, if we were together, I love these pictures. Normally, if we were together, I would say, let's let's do some questions and answering. However, I'm not with you guys. So if you don't mind sending me an email at emily.nolan at famu.edu anytime, I'm more than happy to answer any questions about this presentation that I can answer. Um, and then of course, feel free to contact me at the UF IFAS Jefferson County Extension Office. I'm here eight to five, Monday through Friday, sometimes the weekends. Um, and these are additional resources that I used. So I'll go ahead and stop my screen sharing here. So thank you for watching today. If you have any questions about animal health or husbandry, feel free to contact your veterinarian. You know, do research on your own. Be careful about what the internet says. So definitely talk to a, a, a professional. You know, talk, if you are gonna research on your own, research with accredited veterinary books or sources. Um, and then of course, always ask your vet, your vet techs or your veterinarians and send me your emails, call me, ask me your questions. So thank you for watching this section. Bye-bye now.